Welcome to the Lessons for Living television program. My name is Bill Santos. Thank you so much for watching. How close are you to God? Well, I can tell you exactly how close you are. You are as close as you want to be. And God is as willing to get as close to you as you're willing to get close to him. The first way to go, one step higher for God, is to get one step closer to God. It's interesting that when you take one step closer to God, you actually get two steps closer to God. James tells us here in the epistle of James, chapter 4 and verse 8, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. You see, that verse is both a precept and a promise. The precept is, you draw near to God. The promise is, well then, God will draw near to you. Have you ever, why is it in that order? I mean, why doesn't God draw near to me? So that then I will draw near to him. Why must I draw near to God first. Well, in Jeremiah 29 and in verse 13, here's what we read. When you search for me, yes, search for me with all your heart, you will find me. So, so why do I have to initiate the process? Why do I have to draw near to him before he will draw near to me? Well, the answer is in an old story, I read about a farmer and his wife who were driving to town in their pickup truck. The farmer was sitting behind the steering wheel in silence. His wife was sitting on the other side of the cab right up against the door. After several miles, the wife turns and says, Jed, when we first got married, we didn't sit this far apart. The old farmer dryly replied, I ain't the one who moved. I want to talk to you about developing the devotional life or this connection, quiet time with God. If you're married, God wants to be closer to you than you are to your own spouse. If you're single, God wants to be closer to you than you are to your best friend. If you're a child, God wants to be closer to you than you are to your own parents. He wants all of us to have just a closer walk with him. That through the devotional time, that through that quiet time with God, God was waiting on us to draw near to him. And when we do, then, well, he will draw near to us. The way to do that, the way to walk closer to God is very simple. Point number one, take time for the walk. I mean, look back at the text we started with. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. This is not something we do once in a lifetime. This is something we are to do every day. Don't assume that just because you go to church that you're automatically near to God. It's possible to be diligent in your religion, yet distant in your relationship. We ought to consciously, conscientiously, and constantly be drawing near to God, and hopefully on a daily basis. You know, many Christians are like a little boy I heard about who returned home from his very first day of kindergarten. His mother turned to him and said, Chase, how did you like school today?
The little boy thought for a moment and said, it's fine, but it's not something you want to do every day. Well, I hope through this telecast to motivate all of us, every single one of us, to take one step higher and go one step closer in our walk with God. And if, and if it isn't right now for you, well then sometime in the near future that it will be something that you begin to do every day. If you're going to walk with God, you've got to take time for God. And if you're going to take time for God, you need to have to make time for God. I want to warn you about something, that there's nothing that the devil hates more than to see us make time, quiet time for God. You know, there was this thought framed on a wall I saw one time. It was in the form of a letter, and this is what it said. Dear Christian, when you're faced with a busy day, save precious time by skipping your devotions. Sincerely, Satan. The Lord Jesus Christ said, Satan is a liar. He is a thief. He's going to lie to us. He's going to tell us we don't have to take time, quiet time for God. Then, then he'll try to steal time away from us. That little time that we have. If you're going to have quiet time with God, you must set a time to be quiet with God. Now, let me just stop here, and I just want to give you a quick caution. One of the great dangers people face when they make a fresh determination to spend time with God is at the beginning, they set aside too much time. You know, some people with, you know, good intentions, you know, will say, you know, I'm going to begin every day spending an hour with God. I want to encourage you not to do that. The best way to get started is to set aside, you know, somewhere between 15 and, and 30 minutes of your time. And this is the key. You do it at a time when you're at your best and make that time a sacred appointment with God. You know, David, in the fifth Psalm, uh, verse 3, he tells us, Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I lay it all out before you. Then I wait expectantly. Now, the word here, uh, lay it all out, is the Hebrew word arak. It literally means to set in order. You know, in the Old Testament, it was a word that was used to describe organizing soldiers for a battle or organizing a sacrifice on the altar or, uh, or setting a meal before a guest or even even presenting a legal brief in court. In other words, David is saying here, I, David had a plan to his prayer. He had an order to his quiet time. The NASB translation has it this way. In the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice. In the morning, I will order my prayer to you and eagerly watch. The word can also mean to draw up for battle or to take up positions. So when you have your quiet time with God, you're presenting yourself, you know, for duty, ready to take orders for the day, to find out what it is that God wants us to do. That's why you must take time for that quiet time so that you can talk to God and then that God well, can talk to you. Point number two, take tools to the walk. There are basically four things you need to have an effective, quiet time with God. You need, number one, a Bible. Number two, a notebook. Three, a prayer list. And number four, a pen. You then need to take those tools to a certain place at a certain time. You know, some health experts suggest that the most important meal of the day is breakfast. You know, never start your day on an empty stomach, they say. 
Likewise, you should never start your quiet time on an empty heart. You should start your quiet time by feeding on the Word of God. It is incredible to learn that God has given us the exact diet we need to become that mature ministering person He wants us to be. I would encourage you to, as you read God's Word, write it. Right? What I mean is like, keep a notebook open. Keep that notebook handy. As you read Scripture, you're going to see different things. Sometimes you'll see a, a promise to claim. Sometimes you'll see a lesson to learn. Sometimes you'll see a command to obey. Sometimes you'll see a blessing to enjoy. Sometimes you will see a sin to forsake. When God speaks to your heart through that scripture, write it down. Why? Someone said, because the weakest ink is better than the strongest memory. If you want to draw near to God, and you want to take a higher step by getting one step closer, you must read this book. In it, you're going to find solutions for your problems, healing for your hurts, strength for your weakness, faith for your doubt, and comfort for your sorrow. Just as food is good for you physically, this book is great for you spiritually. I mean, we've all know what Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. It says, All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for showing mistakes, for correcting, and for training character. This book will tell you what is right. It's useful for showing mistakes. It will tell you what is not right. It is useful for correcting. It will tell you how to get right. It's useful for teaching. It will tell you how to stay right. So take the tools to the walk. Number three, take talk with the walk. The first step to walking with God is talking to God. I was interested to learn that the first time the phrase draw near to God is used in the Bible is in 1 Samuel chapter 14. King Saul was talking to his pastor, the priest, about a certain course of action that he ought to take. And here's what we read in 1 Samuel chapter 14, verses 36 and 37. It says, Then Saul said, let us go down after the Philistines by night and take spoil among them until the morning light. And let us not leave a man of them. And they said, do whatever seems good to you. So the priest said, let us draw near to God here. Saul inquired of God, shall I go down after the Philistines? Will you give them into the hand of Israel? But he did not answer him on that day. Drawing near to God involves talking to God. Now, you can pray without being close to God. But you cannot be close to God if you do not pray. If you're going to seek God... You must first speak to God. If you're going to walk with God, you must talk with God. We're talking about is drawing near to God. The Bible says in the 145th Psalm and verse 18, the Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. You know, the other day I was reading <clears throat> about the lung. 
The lungs are two sponge-like organs consisting of three lobes or, or, or sections on the right and two lobes on the left. Air enters through the nose or the mouth and it's sucked down through the trachea into the deepest parts of the lung through what is called the tracheobronchial tree, which actually resembles an inverted tree. The tree branches out into thousands of small tubes and, and subdivides into millions of smaller bronchioles. At the end of each bronchial or, or, or alveoli, which are tiny air sacs through which blood and oxygen are transferred, each alveoli measures only one 250,000th of an inch thick. Once every minute, the heart pumps the body's entire blood supply through the lungs. Through the capillary action, the alveoli soak up the blue oxygen depleted blood, remove its carbon dioxide, which is a waste product. The blue blood is then infused with fresh oxygen, which turns the blood red again. Now this oxygenated blood is then pumped back through the body to feed the hungry tissues while the carbon dioxide is expelled when we exhale. You see, our quiet time with God is just like that. When, when you read your Bible, you're inhaling spiritual oxygen. When you pray, when you confess your sins to God, you are exhaling spiritual carbon di dioxide. Both are important to that good quality, quiet time with God. Let me just very quickly say two things about prayer. First of all, you should pray naturally. That is, when you pray, talk to God just like you normally talk to other people. Or, or, or like you would talk to your best friend. You know, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 and in verse 7, he said, when you pray, don't pour out a flood of empty words as the Gentiles do. They think that by saying many words, they'll be heard. What Jesus meant here is just, was don't pray the same trite phrases over and over that, those phrases that you wouldn't even use in a normal conversation. You know, a lot of our praying reminds me of a story I read of President Theodore Roosevelt. He was at a gala ball and people were coming by and greeting him and all of them were saying the same thing, you know, smiling the same tired smile, repeating the same greeting. And they were... They were talking with their mouths, but not with their heads or their hearts. Well, well, President Roosevelt, he got tired of shaking hands and smiling that big smile and, and responding with the same thing over and over again. So he, he, he did something absolutely outrageous. He was absolutely convinced that nobody was listening to him anyway. So he began to greet the rest of his guests with a smile, saying something like, you know, I murdered my grandmother this morning. Roosevelt said that, you know, with a smile and, and people replied with things like, well, that's wonderful, lovely. You know, one person even said, great, keep up the good work. Roosevelt said there was one person, however, who did listen. He was a foreign diplomat. When he said to the diplomat, you know, I murdered my grandmother this morning, the diplomat leans over, whispers in Roosevelt's ear, Mr. President, if you did that, I'm sure she had it coming. When you talk to God, talk to God. Talk to God the way you, you normally would talk with anyone. Don't just talk with your mouth. Talk with your head. Talk with your heart. Point number four. Take treasure from the walk. Now, what I mean by taking treasure from the walk is this. There is an incredible blessing that comes to both 
us and to God when we take time for that quiet time. Three things will always happen. One, God is honored. The 50th Psalm, verse 23. Look at what it says. The one who offers a sacrifice of thanksgiving is the one who honors me. Many people wonder, just what is our purpose in life? Why are we here on planet Earth? I said, I can answer that question to you in three words. To honor God. And that, the Bible says, is what happens when you have that quiet time with God. God is honored. Secondly, faith is fortified. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3, it says, The Lord gives perfect peace to those whose faith is firm. When you make the time, and you take the time to have that quiet time with God, where all you do during that time is focus on God, there will be a peace like a river that will flood your soul. And finally, the third thing, the soul is satisfied. The 16th Psalm, verse 11, look at what it says. It says, you teach me the way of life. In your presence is total celebration. Beautiful things are always in your right hand. In that quiet time, the path you should walk will be made plain. The presence of God will give you joy and that is unspeakable and, and glory. And there will be a pleasure in beholding God's face, something you will not get anywhere else. Let's pray. Gracious God, loving Heavenly Father, thank you for all of the blessings you give us. Thank you for your desire to draw near to us. And I just pray that as viewers now draw near to you, as they commit to spending daily quiet time with you, that they will feel your presence and the joy and the peace that is not found in anything else but in quiet time with our God. Bless each and every viewer, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've come to the end of another television program, our Lessons for Living program. Let me first thank you for joining us. We appreciate you tuning in each and every week and being here with us. If I could be so bold as to ask for a favor, can you share this program with your friends and with your family so that they too can also tune in? Uh, to facilitate that, we have our L4LTV.com website. Uh, all of the programs will be on the website. This program will be on the website within a short time after you watch it. You can use the website to refer your friends and family to, and they can have access to all of the previous programs. We have some archived sermons there, different presentations I've done around the country. We have uh, how you can get involved in a Bible study group, if that's something you're interested in. We'll have a tab that has live appearances, so where I will be appearing live, and maybe you can come out and see me at one of those appearances. Uh, we also have a Donate Today tab, where you can make a donation to help keep the ministry on the air. We are a charitable organization, so any of the monies received are donations, and you will receive a charitable receipt for income tax purposes. Just on that you know, matter of the donations, I want you to understand that every single dollar that gets donated goes directly to buying the airtime, paying for the studio time, paying for the gifts. Not a penny comes to me or my family in any way in terms of a salary or a bonus or anything. I pastor a church, I draw a salary from that, this ministry, this television ministry, is a labor of love for my family and for my friends. And that's how we stay on the earth, the generosity of so many of you and your prayers. And so just keep that in mind, uh, should you be so inclined to support the ministry with a donation. 
Just before we go, let me just remind you of a couple of other things. We have another part of our ministry, which is our overseas humanitarian work, missionnowcanada.com. That's the website. Every year, we do at least one trip overseas where we go and just provide very practical demonstrations of God's love. Try to alleviate the suffering of folks that have less than what we have. And so check out that website and maybe you can join us on an upcoming mission trip. The dates are there, the information is there. If you're interested, just reach out to me through the missionnowcanada.com website. I want to remind you to follow me on Instagram every morning. A one minute devotional video is posted on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter, like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And within about an hour from the end of this program, you can download an audio version of the program on our SoundCloud account. And you can carry that with you wherever you go and listen to the program at your convenience. We are all out of time. I'll be praying we get to do this again real soon. God bless you. We'll see you then.